Check out FlipSideGaming.com for all your gaming needs. Use the promo code HEROES to save 10% on all orders over $10. Hey there, this is John from Heroes and Legends, and welcome to another edition of the Magic the Gathering Market Watch. Innistrad Midnight Hunt has now officially been released for over a week, and it is having a big impact on some card prices in the secondary market. You're going to see that throughout the video today. Quickly before we get started, though, just a fast reminder, if you go to FlipSideGaming.com, you can use the Heroes promo code to save 10% on orders over $10. Currently, you can pre-order Innistrad Crimson Vow products there, plus they have a whole lot of other things on their website. Remember, if your order is over $100 or consists only of singles, shipping will be free in the United States. Also, whenever you use the promo code, it does support the channel, which is always appreciated. So thank you. And without any further ado, let's get into it. We'll begin with the standard legal spotlight. This is where we look at cards that are standard legal moving the most this week. And like we have been doing for a while now, the threshold in the video is $2. So we're not going to talk about a card unless it's moving at least $2 up or down. Also, we're not going to discuss any cards that were added to the list within Innistrad Midnight Hunt. Those cards are still trying to find their price point. But this is the first week we're adding Innistrad Midnight Hunt cards to the video, and you're going to see some in this section. First, we have some cards going down in value, starting with Pithing Needle, the original copy from Saviors of Kamigawa. This is down 211 to 1109. Of course, this was just reprinted in Innistrad Midnight Hunt, which did make it standard legal, but also put a lot of copies into the marketplace. I have seen this in standard sideboards here or there, but it is hard to say until the format settles a little bit how much play this is going to see this season overall. It has been getting a lot of modern play, though, in both main decks and sideboards. Since it is colorless, it does fit into any build that needs it. It also continues to get a lot of play in Vintage and Legacy. And in Commander, you'll see this in a number of decks like Urza Lord High Artificer. Now it's even showing up in some new builds like Lynn Cheerful Tormentor and Lear Disciple of the Drowned. Moonval Regent, this goes down 234 to 723. Some of these Midnight Hunt cards are still trying to find their price point as packs are quickly being cracked. That is true of not only this card, but the next two we're going to see. When it comes to gameplay and standard so far, I'm seeing four of these in Boros Agro. It is also getting some commander play in builds like the Ur Dragon. Maybe surprising this on, but Tovalar Dire Overlord is down 294 to 499. Now, it is a rare. There's a lot of packs being opened right now, which is why the card is going down in value but it is seeing a lot of play. Standard, you'll find this in Gruel Werewolves and Gruel Aggro, but it is a wildly popular commander right now. Players are building around this, and they're putting in all the new werewolf support that came from Midnight Hunt. You'll also see this in the 99 of some builds in the commander format as well. And the last card going down in value in this section is Teferi, who slows the sunset. This goes down 313 to 999. Standard, you'll see this in Azorius Control. This is also showing up in some commander decks like Atraxa Praetor's Voice. So far, though, the amount of play it's seeing is pretty conservative compared to the price. Ace Rarick, the Arch Lich, this goes up 230 to 1130, and there was a discussion about this card on an MTG Finance message board this week, which could have brought some attention to it. It does see a lot of play, though. This has been in Legacy Aluren deck since it does combo directly with Aluren. It also combos with other cards and is a fairly popular commander, plus it's in the 99 of a bunch of builds there, too. Another reason this could be going up this much right now, though, is because a lot of players are picking this up as an upgrade to Undead Unleashed, one of the new commander decks from Midnight Hunt, and others are putting this in fresh builds around a card from there, Will Help the Rock Cleaver. This is not the last zombie we're going to see today, since Midnight Hunt did bring a lot of support for that tribe. Here's another card that had some discussion on an MTG Finance message board this week, so again, that could tie into this increase. All Runs Epiphany. This goes up 294 this week to 1146. In standard, this is seeing play as a Dragon, Saltai Festival, Prismari Midrange, Saltai and Azorius Control. Plus, this is in a number of Commander builds, and it is getting a little more play there now in Lear, Disciple of the Drowned decks. Demi Lich is back again at 520 this week to 2199. This is starting to see a little standard play and is a tempo. Modern, though, is the real reason this card has been hot recently. You'll find this in Jeskai Phoenix. That deck is running some newer cards and performing really well in MTGO. It has Faithless Salvaging in it along with two cards from Innistrad Midnight Hunt, Consider and Faithful Mending. Additionally, this has been getting a little commander play in a variety of builds, too. Ren and Seven, this is the first of two Mythics from the new set that are going up in value in this section. This one's up 1002 to 39.99. In Standard, this is in Selesnya and Golgari Ramp, Girl Werewolves, Saltai Festival, sometimes Mono Green Aggro. In Pioneer, you'll see this in Four Color Omnith. And in Commander, this is an Omnith Locus of Creation, and a number of other builds old and new. 
And the last card in this section is the Meat Hook Massacre up 1797 to 3799. There is a lot of buzz around this card right now due to the play it is seeing in two different formats. And it is another card that had a rather lengthy discussion about it on an MTG Finance message board this week. Standard, you're going to find this in Orzhov Midrange, Demir Control, Saltai Festival, and Golgari Ramp. This is also in a number of Commander decks, old and new, including the popular Will Help the Rock Cleaver build. And it is a good upgrade for Undead Unleashed out of the box. And that takes us to the Pioneer Legal Spotlight. Let's look at some cards going down in value first. Anointed Procession, down 238 to 3507. This is a great commander card that has been retracting after seeing some gains earlier this year. Keep an eye on this one, though, because it does frequently appear in Edgar Markov builds. If this is not reprinted, it could move up again later this fall. We know there's going to be a lot of Vampire support in Crimson Vow. One of the commander decks that comes out with that product is called Vampiric Bloodline. Plus, the other one is called Spirit Squadron. This could be a good upgrade there. Dragonlord Dromoka. This is the copy from the list. It goes down 290 this week to 3697. It was added to the list with Adventures in the Forgotten Realms, and it is sticking around in Midnight Hunt. It recently saw more commander play due to the push the Dragon Tribe did receive in Adventures in the Forgotten Realms. Since this is remaining on the list, though, for a second set, and since some commander players are turning their attention to other tribes supported by Midnight Hunt, the price continues to go down. Steam Vents, the original copy from Guild Pact, is down $324 to $32. Shock Lamps were reprinted again recently in the Culture Shock Secret Layers, and next year they are going to be reprinted again in a space theme for the upcoming unset on Finity. Being a Shock Lamp, this does get play in Pioneer, Modern, and Commander in many builds old and new. Alright, last card going down in this section is a weird one, I just wanted to point it out. Trulane Teller of Tales, the copy from the list that was only there during Zendikar Rising, it goes down in theory $20.68 to $10.94. However, because it was only there for that first set, there's not a lot of copies at any given time online, which means this can be the target of some weird market manipulation, and it has been in the past. Now, it feels like that manipulation is starting to back off a little bit. $10.94 is still too much to pay for this card, but at least it's moving in the right direction. I thought it was worth pointing out. When it comes to gameplay, this just rotated out of standard. It wasn't seeing much play there, though, anyway. But it is known for being a very popular commander and part of the 99 of some builds there too. Relentless Dead of 266 to 3129. Like many cards this week, this is seeing more commander play due to the zombie push from Midnight Hunt. Happens to be a great upgrade for Undead Unleashed and a solid card in a fresh commander build around Will Held the Rock Cleaver. So many cards though in this video are going to fall into that exact category. I won't keep repeating myself. So when I say a card is going up because it's a zombie, just copy and paste everything I just said about this card there. And here's your first chance. Crypt Breaker. This is going up because it's a zombie. It's up 344 to 1208. Arlen Korda, 560 this week to 1999. Guess what? Zombies are not the only tribe that got a push from Midnight Hunt. Werewolves and Wolves have also been seeing more commander play because of the new set. And this is a support planeswalker for those tribes. It is seeing a huge increase in commander play now in the Tovalar Dire Overlord slash Tovalar the Midnight Scourge decks. Plague Belcher, it's another zombie up 689 this week to 890. I do have something to add about this one, though. It was mentioned in a recent episode of the Command Zone podcast as a possible upgrade to Undead Unleashed, which could have brought some more attention to it. And finally for this section, we have the Scarab God. The Double Masters copy is up 1236 this week to $35. The Hour of Devastation copy up 1255 to 3540. Now, you already know why this is going up in value. In Pioneer, the sees playing five color Yorian, sometimes Niv to Light. Is that not it? Okay, that's not it. The reason it's going up, of course, is because of the zombie push from Midnight Hunt, and this plays very well with zombies, even though it is not a zombie itself. In Commander, many times this is the commander for zombie tribal builds. Other times it's in the 99. And of course, a lot of people are picking this up as an upgrade to Undead Unleashed, or putting it in fresh Will Help builds. And that takes us to the Modern Legal Spotlight. We're going to look at some cards going down in value, and then some cards going up in value. Starting with Arcbound Ravager. This is the copy from Darksteel. It's down 392 to 2716. This did spike after the release of Modern Horizons 2. Now that we see the direction the modern meta has gone, this is retracting some. Still gets some play there, though. It's in Modern Hardened Scales. This also gets a little legacy play and some commander play. I have seen this in some new builds around another card from Undead Unleashed, Eloise Nefelia Sleuth. Next, we have Archive Trap. This is the copy from the list. It did join the list with Strixhaven, and it is still there, so it's been in a number of sets now. It goes down $3.92 this week to $30.06, as yet again, people are opening set boosters. 
This is found in Modern Mill, also gets a little commander play. Renin 6 from Modern Horizons, down 402 to $110, still pretty expensive. Wizards announced not too long ago that there would be a Double Masters set next year, Double Masters 2022, and they showed art from this card, so it looks like it is going to be reprinted there. But it is still seeing a ton of play, and a lot of players just can't wait to pick up copies because they're trying to put them in decks. In Modern, you'll see this in Luris Jund, Indomitable Creativity, Four Color Yori, and Four Color Cat Combo, Regular Jund, Niv to Light, Scape Shift, and more. It is banned in Legacy, but it does see some Vintage and Commander play as well. Oh, Sway of the Stars. Down 484 this week to 949. This spiked pretty aggressively last week. It retracts, obviously, quite a bit this week. There were people speculating last week, based on the unbanning of Worldfire in Commander, that maybe this card would eventually become unbanned in Commander. Now, Sheldon Mannery did write an article talking about the unbanning of Worldfire and brought this card up. Basically, he said that they did consider it, but there's a big difference between this and Worldfire because even though there are many similarities, this card does refill the caster's hand, giving them maybe a big advantage if they have a lot of floating mana. So it didn't sound like from that article that this is going to be unbanned anytime soon, and I think people are realizing that, and it's quickly cooling off. Polluted Delta from Onslaught down 680 this week to $100.69. This, like a lot of lands, jumped when players were building new modern decks post Modern Horizons 2. The Onslaught fetches also saw a push when Time Spiral Remastered caused some renewed interest in classic card frames. Now this is cooling off some as you can see, but it is a fetch land, so it does get a ton of play in many modern legacy and commander builds. This does fetch islands or swamps, so it is a good upgrade to Undead Unleashed. Again, something you could put in a fresh Wilhelm deck as well. And I'm seeing this in another new commander build too, Lind Cheerful Tormentor. Last card going down in value, Emrakul of the Yans Torn, the copy from the list. Now this did leave after Cal time, it goes down 846 this week to 4888. This is banned in Commander. It still sees a lot of play, though, in Modern. It's an indomitable creativity. Many times, just got control and much more. You do see this come out of the sideboard in that format as an answer to the mill decks. In Legacy, you'll see this in Sneak and Show, Omnitel, Doomsday, Cloudpost builds, and sometimes Enchantress. Mystic Gate. We did see that Double Masters copy jump for a couple weeks now. This week, it's the Shadowmore copy. It's up $538 to $25. In Modern, this is in Jeskai Control, Reanimator builds, Azorius Yorian, sometimes Esper Control. This is also a solid Commander mana base card, too. Master of the Wild Hunt, the copy from Magic 2010. It's up 593 this week to 2832, even though it has been added to the list with Midnight Hunt. This, of course, is getting more Commander play now in some of those Tovalar builds. Undead War Chief, the Scourge copy is up 402 to 1173, the Plane Chase copy up 469 to 1389, the Time Spiral copy is up 656 to 1699. Of course, this is a solid zombie lord moving for all the reasons we talked about earlier, but additionally, this was in a Verena Lich Queen build on an Extra Turns episode of the Command Zone podcast this week. Maybe that brought a little attention to it as well. However, I think with or without that episode, this card would have been climbing pretty significantly. Mayor of Averbrock up 662 this week to 1765. This is seeing additional commander play in Tovalar builds, as you can imagine. But to a lesser degree, you are seeing this in builds around another new card. Katilda Dawnheart Prime. Lurgoyf, the copy from Deckmasters Garfield vs. Finkel. This is only found in foil. It is up 662 this week to 1999. There was some talk about early foils like this one on an MTG message board not too long ago. That did cause this, as well as some other cards, to spike. Since then, though, they have gone back down, including this one. However, this week it jumps back up again. It is seeing additional commander play now in old Stick Fingers builds. And the last card in this section is Grave Crawler. Those extra convention mystery booster boxes that went out to game stores recently aren't holding this one back. Dark Ascension is up $671 to $24. The mystery booster copy up $1227 to $2821. And Dual Decks Blessed vs. Curse, that copy is up $1426 to $2773. Now, it is a zombie. You know why this is going up in value for the most part, but there's a few other notes I wanted to add, other factors that could at least be having a small impact on the price. First off, Modern. We are seeing a Rakdos zombie deck. It's using a number of the new cards. We'll have to see if that goes anywhere. Time will tell. But that deck is running this card. Legacy, this already sees play there in Hogak. And the Command Zone podcast did mention this card this week again as a possible upgrade for Undead Unleashed. And that takes us to the Vintage Spotlight. This is where we talk about cards that see play in Legacy, Vintage, 93, 94, or cards that are just popular among collectors. 
Now remember, there is still market manipulation occurring in the secondary market for vintage cards, but I will say it's not nearly as bad as it was a few months ago, which is good news. If you are buying an older card, though, do your research. Be careful. Also, too, I point this out every week, but I do think it is worth mentioning. Older, more iconic vintage cards, many times people want to get those graded. So when you go to your price tracking websites and you see a price, that could be a mixture of high-grade raw and high-grade graded prices you're seeing there. Now, the prices in this section are very reminiscent of what you might see on a price tracking website. However, if the price isn't somewhere in the middle between high-grade raw and high-grade graded for those more iconic cards, or if I see some market manipulation when I look at true sales, I will point that out. First, we have Taiga. This is a revised dual land. There's actually a few of these on the list today. It goes up 460 to 40499. In many cases, these lost some value recently and they're starting to rebound a little bit. Badlands from Revised, it is up 520 to 499.25. Mox Diamond from Stronghold up 649 to 636.12. In Legacy, this is in Lands and Knight of the Reliquary. Also gets a good amount of commander play, plus it is seeing more play now in some old Stick Fingers builds. Lion's Eye Diamond up 794 this week to 599.99. Legacy, you'll find this one in Doomsday, Karn Echoes, Gyruda builds, the Epic Storm, and more. This is also getting some increased commander play in some old Stick Fingers decks. Scrubland from Revised up 849 this week to 37807. Lord of Atlantis from Unlimited up 1144 to 11454. There are a lot of Unlimited cards going up in value this week. You're going to see a number of them. If you see a white border card in this section and I don't point out that it's from Revised, then it is from Unlimited. I won't keep repeating that. Contract from below. This goes up 1242 to 10247. Gabriel Angelfire. This is the one from Legends up 1383 to $50. Personal Incarnation up sixteen fifty to forty eight ninety nine. Icy Manipulator this goes up nineteen thirty five to one seventy three fifty nine. Hercules Recall from Antiquities up twenty one twenty eight to one fifty nine ninety nine. Lord of the Pit up twenty eight forty four to ninety five dollars. Alabaras Carpet up thirty dollars and two cents to one ninety nine ninety nine. Living Lands up thirty two oh seven to eighty six ninety seven. Fungusaur up thirty four oh one to ninety four dollars. Underground Sea from Revised. This goes up 35.59 to 9.21.18. Tropical Island from Revised up 38.05 to 7.49.50. Natural Selection up 45 dollars to 3.49.99. Word of Command up 50 dollars to 4.49.99. Rock of Courage is up 54.47 to 80 dollars. Illusionary Mask up 81.84 to 4.29.95. Fork up 101.84 to 3.01.82. Raging River, this goes up 136.45 to 462.48. High grade raw copies can sell for about $230. I have not seen a high grade graded copy sell for a while, but when one does, it could hit this price. Stasis, very similar story here. This is up 137.22 to 212.54. I have seen high grade raw copies sell for about 200. Next time a high grade graded copy sells, it could go for more than this. Guardian Beast is up 147.43 to 1295. Singing Tree. Now this one is a little inflated. In theory, it's going up 193.85 to 1139.99. But high grade raw copies are really selling for about 335. High grade graded copies can just break a thousand. Vesuvian Doppelganger. This one feels even more inflated. It goes up in theory 374.89 to 999.95. In reality, high grade raws can sell for about 200. I have not seen any high grade graded copies sell for a while. The Abyss, this goes up $392.50 to $1,990, or does it? Well, high-grade raw copies can sell for almost $1,500 now. Not too long ago, I saw a high-grade graded copy sell for a little more than $1,500. Since the prices are so close, I would imagine in the future a high-grade graded copy could pass this. Mox Ruby up $535 to $4,975. Is this one for real? Well, when it comes to these Power 9 cards, it's hard to really follow the prices because they don't sell all too often. Basically, what you're seeing with these ups and downs typically is a case where you just have higher grade or lower grade copies on the marketplace in that given week. And finally, we have Time Twister. It goes up $1,750 to $11,000. And that takes us to the Commander Spotlights. All the cards in this section are moving, at least in part because of Commander, but there are some other reasons too. I will point those out as we go through. Ranger class of 210 this week to $8, and this is also seeing a huge surge in commander play due to those Tovalar decks. In standard, four of these are in the mono green aggro decks. Those are doing really well right now in the format. 
This is also in Grill Werewolves, Grill Agro, Pioneer, it's in Mono Green Ramp, Mono Green, and Selesnia Company as well. Archon of Cruelty, this is up 220 this week to 1499. Very solid commander card and combo enabler in many builds. Modern, you'll find this in Reanimator builds. Legacy, it's also in Reanimator there. And in Vintage, it is in Oath of Druids. Aggravated Assault from Onslaught, this copy is up 226 this week to 4999. This is a solid commander card, getting more play now in Tovalar builds. Plus, it is possible that we will see this in future Commander Vampire builds when Crimson Vow and Vampiric Bloodline come out. Huntmaster of the Fells from Dark Ascension. This goes up 251 this week to 3250, and I think you know why. This, of course, is going up because of the Werewolf Tribal support we discussed earlier, and it is showing up in Tovalar builds. Solitude up 253 to 2493. This has been a fairly popular commander card in a number of different builds. And it is another card that found a lot of discussion on one of those MTG Finance message boards this week. In Modern, you'll find this in Jeskai Control, Five Color Elementals, and much more. Legacy, it's in Death and Taxes and more there. Even gets a little vintage play. Death Coil Worm. This goes up 280 this week to 2499. This is yet to be reprinted, and it is a little dry online this week. It does see a tad bit of Commander play, but this and another hard-to-find card with Rebecca Gay Art are both moving up this week. So it could be a player or a small group of players looking to pick up cards from a popular artist. Another card that had some discussion on one of those MTG Finance message boards that seems to be a trend this week. This is Salvala Stampede. It goes up 285 to 1161. But there are reasons why this was being discussed. It is seeing additional commander play in Tovalar builds. And there was a Tovalar deck on Game Nights last week that was running a lot of the cards that you might expect. But it was running this too, and it may have introduced this card to a new audience. Avacyn Angel of Hope, the copy from Double Masters of 289 this week to 4289. Now, some players might be thinking about this card simply because Innistrad Midnight Hunt just came out, but we know this is an excellent commander card, has been for a long time in Kali of the Vast and other decks. It's even a fairly popular commander, plus, it is getting some additional play in that format now around a new card, and that is Adeline Resplendent Cathar. Lord of the Undead, you know why this one's going up. Ninth edition up 234 to 1748. The copy from the list is up 249 to 1737, and that has been there from the beginning, still there in Innistrad Midnight Hunt, and the eighth edition copy is up 292 to 1906. Commander Greven Elvec, this sees a tad bit of commander play, but it is a reserveless card that started to dry up online this week. Maybe this is the start of a buyout, perhaps. It goes up 298 to 1112. Phyrexian Altar, the Invasion copy up 224 to 7560. The Ultimate Masters copy goes up 302 to 7553. This is a great commander card and combo enabler in various builds, but now many players are using this as an upgrade to Undead Unleashed, and again putting it in fresh builds around Will Held the Rock Cleaver. But this is also seeing some commander play around another new card. It's in some Eloise Nefalia Sleuth decks too. Graveborn Muse, now this was added to the list with Innistrad Midnight Hunt. And of course, by now you know why it's going up in value, but I do have one more thing to add. Additionally, this was in that Varina deck on the Extra Turns episode of the Command Zone podcast this week. Maybe it brought a little attention to the card, but again, I think this would have been going up regardless. Legions is up 277 to 699, and the 10th edition copy is up 317 to 859. Nature's Cloak from Starter 1999. Now this is that other hard to find in good condition Rebecca Gay card that I was alluding to earlier. It does have another printing, though. This one is also in Portal. But the starter 1999 copy is up 330 this week to $8. Chalice of the Void from Modern Masters. This goes up 354 this week to $77.99. And sure, this does see a little commander play, but Modern is the format that made this card hot recently. After Modern Horizons 2 came out, a lot of players were building new decks or reworking old ones. Those decks needed good sideboard options, and this one being colorless fit into any build that was needed. For the most part, copies of this card have stabilized, but this particular one is going up this week. Aside from Modern and Commander, this also continues to see a lot of Legacy and Vintage play. Noxious Ghoul, again, you know why this is going up, but I do have one thing to add. This was in that Command Zone podcast episode discussing upgrades for Undead Unleashed. Plane Chase is up 225 to 649 and the copy from the list goes up 371 to $5 that join the list with Adventures in the Forgotten Realms. Zombie Master from 6th edition. Again, you know why this one's going up. It's up 385 this week to 1347, but I do have one more thing to add. This was part of that Varina deck in the Extra Turns episode of the Command Zone podcast this week. Again, I do think regardless, this would have been going up in value, though. 
Curse of Vengeance of 441 to 2219. It's not all about zombies and werewolves. Midnight Hunt has also brought us some new curses, and more importantly, a new legendary creature in Grixis Colors that encourages you to build a commander deck with them. That card is Lind, Cheerful Tormentor. This is seeing more play in that build, and it is spiking aggressively since it is harder to find than other curses. It was in one Commander 2016 deck, and that's it. Grim Grin, Corpse Born. This is up 518 to 1395. This is a fairly popular commander, seeing more play now with the support that the Zombie Tribe is getting. And by now, you know the rest. Dream Halls. This does get a little commander play, but it is a reserve list card that dried up online this week. This could very well be a targeted buyout unfolding. It goes up 851 this week to 49.99. And finally in this section, we have a big mover. This is Rot Hulk. It goes up 24.98 to 41.20. Okay, we've already covered the gameplay reasons why something like this would be moving, but there is a little more to the story here. This is a hard to find card from the 2018 Magic Game Night product. Not a lot of copies out there in the marketplace online. And somebody picked up on that fact, and there was a discussion about it on an MTG Finance message board, and the rest is history. And it is time for the premium spotlight. Again, a lot of cards are moving in the premium market, as always. I can't cover them all. However, I like to pick out at least one card every week, sometimes a handful of cards that are moving due to something happening, some kind of news. In other words, these cards might be good in a new deck. There might be some talk about them because of a preview card, something along those lines. I'm not going to discuss cards that are moving just because they dried up in the marketplace or because they're the target of a buyout. You see that type of thing all the time when it comes to premium cards. Today, I only have one card to talk about, but it's a good one. It is the Meat Hook Massacre from the beginning of the video. The foil copy is up $17.18 to $37.99. The extended art copy is up $17.69 to $42.99. And the extended art foil copy is up $22.46 to $59.99. So are these prices legitimate? Well, if you go to eBay sold and completed listings, there is a pretty wide variety of different prices people are willing to pay right now for this card because the spike just happened. However, I am seeing a lot of people pay more than what you see on the screen here, which means sellers most likely are going to hike up the prices if they haven't already by the time you see the video. So I would expect the cheaper copies to dry up and the more expensive copies to stick around, leading to maybe a further increase in value technically. But at some point, the sellers will find the ceiling and the card price will start to relax a little. We just don't know exactly where that's going to be quite yet. And that's going to do it for this episode of the Magic the Gathering Market Watch. If you stuck with me the whole time, thanks for being here. Stay safe out there. And as always, thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe and have a great day. Hey, thanks for watching. This video is made possible through the generous support of viewers like you on Patreon. Check out the description below for links to our Patreon page as well as our Amazon affiliate store where a small percentage of all sales will also help support the channel. Finally, if you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the new videos on Heroes and Legends. Talk to you again soon and have a great day.